Go and check my record. I've governed the state for eight years and I've challenged everybody. Polly was there. I've been the only governor till today. The day I left office, I was not owing salary, pension, gratuity, or any contract or any supplier. And I left the three banks in Nigeria, which I say every day. Access Bank of Nigeria, Fidelity Bank of Nigeria, and Diamond Bank, I left hundred and over $150 million. Dollars, I didn't say that. And I have over 30 billion naira. And I don't brush state, you can go and verify it. I've never had a bottle. I don't brush state, I've never bought me. There's no land allocated directly and indirectly by me, and I've signed over several thousands of CEO. I don't have never bought me a bottle of water since I left office. So you can go. We will fight and stop corruption. The first thing about stopping corruption is yourself. If you're not involved, your wife is not involved, your family is not involved, those around you are not involved, you reduce it by over 50%. Yeah. And that's what I'm going to do. And I'm sure Paul, you know that. We are committed. We can't disappoint these youths. We must build a new Nigeria. Yesterday, go and read the letter I wrote to World Bank, asking for $82 million to build Kaichi Dam to provide 760 kilo megawatts of electricity. And he wrote it clear. I'm applying for this loan strictly to borrow for this investment to spur growth, economic growth for my country. That was 58 years ago. That facility is still standing. What he borrowed is $82 million. We now owe $120 million billion without anything to show for it because we consumed it. It was for consumption. There's nothing wrong with borrowing. Every country of the world borrows. No country. Every country of the world borrows. America is the biggest economy. They are owing over 100, about 100, over 100 percent of their GDP. The second biggest economy is Japan, China. They are owing about 60 percent of their GDP. The third one is Japan. Japan is owing 230 percent of their GDP. It can go on and on and show you. Even Netherlands that had the highest sovereign wealth fund of 1.4 trillion, Your Excellency is owing 50 percent of their GDP. So everybody borrows. The difference is what you use the borrowing to do. Where did you invest it? What did, what, what did it create? Our own was for consumption. People are borrowing for investment. And I've gone from countries to countries everywhere to show that this is happening. China borrowed in 1990, 93% to 95% of Chinese people live under poverty. Today, it's less than 2%. India was a similar situation, under 5%. Vietnam was actually 96%. Today, they have less than 3%. So, ours that we have been doing people out of poverty. I just to illustrate to you why borrowing is different here and other countries. I was in Bangladesh in 2010. I've studied 31 countries, comparing them with Nigeria. In Bangladesh in 2010, Your Excellency, they had a GDP of $115 billion with a per capita of $747 per capita. And their debt was $45 billion, 36% of their GDP in 2010. Nigeria, as of then, had a GDP of $375 billion per capita of two. $1,250. So we are three times Vietnam in terms of that capital, which is a real measure of wealth. And our debt then was $30 billion, less than 10% of our GDP. Today, Vietnam GDP is $340 billion. They've grown by three times. Their per capita is $2,050. They've grown by 10 times. Their debt also increased 
to about 115 billion, which remains even less than 36 percent because there is it's now about 32 percent of their GDP, which means they borrowed more. They invested it. If you go to Vietnam today, the exports, the overseas diaspora fund, everything has increased. Today, Vietnam exports garment 36 billion dollars. To why is what we earn from oil? Garment, they are not can just garment. That's what they export. Not the, the, the something that is sophisticated. And no small businesses, which we're not doing here. And in our own situation, our GDP today is about four hundred billion dollars. Our per capita, which is the real measure of wealth, is now one thousand. Call it one hundred eighty. Call it two thousand. So we've actually lost about eleven percent of what we were in two thousand and ten. And our debt have gone from thirty billion to one hundred and twenty billion dollars. So we borrowed about hundred billion dollars, which nobody can explain what we was invested. And when, as they say, it's for capital project. If you borrow money and it didn't impact on your GDP, it didn't impact on your capital, you consumed it. That is the crisis we face as a nation. The consequence is that our debt service now is over 90% of our income. In 2001, first five months of 2001, Your Excellency, Nigeria as a country made 1 trillion 847 billion 847 billion naira. We use 1 trillion 802 to service debt. 98%, only 45 remain for a country of 200 million people. And we are borrowing more. We said last year our budget was 13.5 trillion. We are going to borrow only 5 trillion. We borrowed 7. This year, our budget plus subsidy and everything will be hitting about 20. They said they are going to borrow only about 6. Your Excellency, we are not going to borrow less than 10. And that is the crisis of force. And what are we even borrowing? With this are monies, we are not issuing foreign bonds of 2040, 2045, 2060, when we are no longer going to be here. And our children, in the past one year, Nigeria has not put one naira in the sinking fund. Not one naira. So even when you are servicing debt, you are supposed to be saving money to pay the debt. When you mature, we are not putting money there. The crisis is that when we are dead, our children will have nowhere because we've eaten their future. And nobody is talking about that. And we need to move this country. In. And there's only wrong in this country. It's a country that can be changed. Look at something like Taraba. Look at what is happening all over the world. Today, we are struggling with oil, sharing of oil money, sharing. Who is doing that? Even in America, that is the biggest country in the world, Texas that is producing several more oil than we are producing. The biggest state in America is California. And what does California do? Texas is not even number one. They're not number two. They're number three. Texas GDP today is 3.4 trillion, eight times Nigerian GDP. They have no oil. What they are exporting is agriculture and knowledge. Agricultural materials and knowledge. That's all that is making them that thick. When we are here fighting over a diminishing assets that has since expired, all you didn't say yet is Venezuela. Venezuela has 10 times more oil than Nigerian deposits, and yet they collapse. And we're here fighting about oil. No country is talking about oil today. Vietnam, countries and nations have every. Look at the vast land that I saw when we are alive into here today. I told the people in Niger, you have 76.3 square kilometers of land in Niger State. Your Excellency, they can't feed themselves. They can't feed. Nigeria, they don't export anything. The other one is that when you deal with natural one because people have means of livelihood, you deal with support to your security agencies, which is renewable every year. And with this, you generate more money. Every day, Your Excellency, we say in this country, 
and we don't have revenue, we don't have revenue. Even when government said the, the, the revenue to GDP is too low, it has to be low. Because there are millions of people who are not doing anything. The more your people are doing something, the more your economy is productive, the more revenue you generate. You can't generate revenue for people who are not doing anything. It's a simple thing. It's been done everywhere in the world. And it's very easy, Your Excellency. It's not a case if you go, and where do you generate the most revenue? In your youth, the young ones, in their productive age. You have to invest in them. And what do they need? They need access to capital and training. They have the idea. They can change the world. It's not a sophisticated thing. Nigerian youths are talented. All they need is support. And it is have to be government determined support. It's happening in China. If you go to Indonesia, they have a particular number of their loans that go to small businesses. What changes the countries? Small, micro, small corporations. Not wow. by that was quite interesting. Thanks for watching. Do remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, click the notifi notification bell so that when we upload a new videos, you would also be informed. Kindly give us a thumbs up on this video. That is one way you help our video to go to more people. Thank you very much. Until we come your way again, it's bye for now.